So a couple times in this channel's history, I make a video and it does a lot better than expected and it starts a conversation in my comment section and it starts people accusing me of certain things. Now, today I'm going to respond to a lot of the comments I've been getting on my video about racism against Indians being everywhere. Because unbelievably, people were just being insanely racist in the comments and I couldn't believe it. In a video where I was specifically using examples of racism I've seen online, people were both agreeing with what was in the video, the racism I was showing, and also bringing up new excuses to be racist and saying how, from a left-wing perspective, I'm wrong. I don't care about women, obviously, because to them, all Indians are just like savages who can't control themselves. And interestingly, something I actually forgot about, TikTok is actually banned in India. So I was talking about how I found TikToks, just, you know, people being really racist to Indians and having it being very normalized. People were saying, yeah, we can't even respond to that because in India, it's it's blocked. So you're going to have to use a VPN or some sort of, you know, other account. So there isn't this narrative being presented on things like TikTok from an Indian perspective. And like I said, what you get is people who go to India making like travel content, they will show you like the slums. They will show you maybe some religious practices that we find weird. And then every single person just believes that is what India represents. So I want to use this video to respond to some of the comments, especially, especially the ones where it's like calling me out for defending the Indian communities across like places like Canada from this racism by saying that no, the racism is actually justified and one really interesting thing I actually saw in the comments, which to me, you know, is something I've been seeing more on social media, especially with like Latinos who voted for Trump or black people who voted for Trump or Native Americans who voted for Trump. People from other like groups are saying, well, you, you can be racist to them. They deserve it because they did a bad thing. So what you're going to see here, hopefully I can show you it because there's thousands of comments. There's people from other like marginalized communities in Western countries saying, well, Indians have been racist to me, therefore I don't care, which is fundamentally just the wrong way to look at it. And something I wasn't ignoring that, yeah, I know there is like racism in India itself, but that's really not what we were talking about in the video. We were talking about Western people being racist to Indians online and also being racist to immigrants from Indian countries based on like the old stereotypes of they're coming here and taking all our jobs and ruining our lovely culture. So I'm going to talk about all of that today while, you know, responding to the comments. Now, just a brief little recap, because a lot of people will actually be watching this not knowing what my video is about, bizarrely, because they wouldn't have watched that video and they'll be watching this one. But if you haven't, go watch the first video. If you want a quick summary, basically what I did is I first showed loads of racism online against Indians, especially on Twitter and TikTok and how it's been really normalized. I then spoke about growing up in a pretty South Asian area and British Indian communities and South Asian communities. Then I spoke about obviously the Hindu nationalist government of Modi targeting uh, Sikh activists and Sikh separatists in Canada. Obviously that's been a massive international story right now. And then I spoke about the surge in Indian immigration to Canada and a lot of it is based around Indians going to university and then getting jobs at like Tim Hortons and just this big surge in skilled migration and big surge in immigration generally that the Canadian government want because the economy relies on this because of its Asian population in particular and just the reaction from Canadians to basically go like fully mask off racist and a lot of them aren't even complaining about like jobs or anything like that. They're literally just complaining about like Indian culture, which I also said, you know, for these people, how the hell do they know if someone they think is Indian in Canada that they see on the street? How do they know they weren't born in Canada? They simply don't. And a lot of them are saying because they speak a different language, I know. But obviously, you know, if you grow up around people from different countries, when you live in an English speaking country, you know, loads of loads of them speak different languages all the time. Doesn't mean they weren't born here. So um, that's the context for this video. And here are the comments that I've been getting. So let's go through them. So someone calling me out, maybe someone who used to watch me saying, I'm literally watching Hindus attacking Sikhs at their temple. 
in my quiet hometown, bringing their cultural conflicts here. That's not to say what the Indian government has been doing, assassinating Sikh Canadian citizens. Really missing the mark on this one. Notice an overall degradation of quality and half assed research in the last year or so, pretending that corporations and politicians aren't the driving force of his conflict, with cheap labour creating a wedge between people, gaming the, system, gaming the system for a cottage industry of less than honest immigration practices, alongside an already struggling population, barely able to afford food and housing as it is, is super disingenuous. Painting this trend in such a one-sided tunnel vision manner is just disappointing. No wonder you fell off. I don't know what this person's talking about. No better than the far right with your presentation of a complex, multifaceted situation, instead preferring overly simplistic explanations that doesn't help or explain anything to anyone and just there to feel outrage rather than understanding absolute hypocrite, hypocrite spelt wrong. Um, fell off is one thing I reject and I said it in my reply, like, I've fallen on. This is my best year ever. This video's done really well. People generally like it. But um, I also, if this person watched the video and think I presented like a one-sided view, I spoke about all that stuff. I spoke about uh, the Indian government targeting Sikh activists. And I actually spoke about immigration from a left-wing point of view. And I actually said this. I said, obviously, why Canada are doing this and that, you know, want more migrant labour is to fill gaps in the system because there's an aging population in Canada and their economy relies on this migration. Similar with Japan, which isn't doing this, but if it wants to survive in the way the Japanese economy is, it's going to have to do this at some point as well. And also, if you have an aging population and a declining population, you need people to fill in the healthcare system. And what I said in the video is basically that, yeah, like, if you want to have an influx of immigration, you need to redesign the system essentially to accommodate that because I talked about this, with urbanization, it forces people into cities. Even in a country before immigration, it forces people into claustrophobic conditions in the cities just for this labor pool. And when you're having loads of immigration and you're not changing anything about that, it's gonna cause problems and it's gonna put a strain on the system. I also talked about how the Canadian government as well, he's saying like, I'm not talking about the corporations. I'm saying they love the cheap labor. And I talked about Donald Trump in America. He loves the cheap labor. So even with all the, you know, the rhetoric right now about them, them deporting loads of illegal immigrants, I believe they will do that to some extent. But at the same time, it's not because they have a problem with them being there. It's just like a cultural thing to appeal to their base because people like Trump have historically used illegal immigrant labor because they can exploit them even more than general workers under capitalism. I don't know how I didn't explain that to people and explain the motivations for this. And I also just try to, what I did in the video, is humanise the people who do this. Because if you come from a migrant working class background, like my grandmother and my granddad and my other grandparents, they all came to England. My grandmother came here when she was like 15 after World War II, did like loads of manual labour jobs all across the country. And she was also treated badly, right? Because they had this narrative, oh my God, the Irish are coming over here and taking our jobs. Same exact shit that people have always said about migrants until eventually some are accepted and Irish migrants are accepted more because we are white, so we don't get othered as much. But I spoke about all of this, so I don't know how I didn't address this. Just seems like they're getting mad that I'm not being sympathetic to the cultural narrative of, oh my God, how dare they speak their own language in Canada. Someone else saying I have no idea what I'm talking about without bringing up any points to counter anything I said seems to be just based on vibes. Um, and when you get stuff like this, and I know what they're trying to say, it says American Indians voted 65% for Trump. Now, someone explaining that if you're putting out that number, it seems pretty clear that's Native Americans. But I think that what they were trying to say here is, yeah, like Indians are generally like racist and bad because they voted for Trump. Basically what we've been seeing recently is people saying that, yeah, whole groups of people are actually bad because they voted for Donald Trump, so they deserve racism and xenophobia. You might have seen those videos of people like ringing ice on people they know who might not have like settled immigrant status. So I got another one here. The reason the West is like this, racist they mean, is because tens of thousands are moving to the West and they aren't adopting any Western culture. They are just escaping India. If you go to Toronto, you will see it's now 50% Indian. Is it racist to want your country to consist mostly of people that actually respect Canadian culture? Every shopping mall I go to in the York region is now 50% Indian people walking through them. So why this comment is so fucking insane, they don't even explain how, how Indian migrants or Indian Canadians don't respect Canadian culture. 
Like, are they going to explain to me how? And in the video I actually spoke about, I grew up in an area which is like nearly 40% South Asian. And it's like, yeah, people respect the culture. They just live a normal life, obey the law, and mostly people get along. Even in massive melting pots like London and New York or Toronto, people get along. So what is the issue here? That 50% apparently are Indian. And how do they not respect Canadian culture? Is there just like a huge surge, like a huge crime wave of Indian students doing like bank robberies or something like that? Like, what is the issue here? It doesn't seem like there is an issue beyond they don't respect Canadian culture. What is Canadian culture to start with? And again, this is this woke, like fascist thing I keep talking about. Every time we implement xenophobic policies that get some sort of agreement across the political spectrum, we talk about protecting our culture, Western culture, secular culture, which Muslims don't respect. That's what we say in the UK. But now in Canada, they're saying, well, well, the Indians don't respect this either. But in England, in regards to Indian people, we consider them a part of this. So again, you can see how this becomes malleable to a different situation where they're xenophobic, mainly against a different group. So in the UK, it's the Muslims who aren't compatible. It's the Muslims who don't respect us. And in Canada, it's the Indians that don't respect us. Like, how is this just not like flat out racism? Again, in a video where I'm calling out this, Indian people are mostly that way. Whether you want to call it racism or not, almost 90% of Indians have really bad manners. See, it's just so fucking insane. 90% of Indians. And I say, yeah, you've met over 1 billion Indians then to determine that 90% of 1.4 billion people have bad manners. Someone else saying, you have to see 1 billion Indians to tell if the majority of rotten eggs, acting as if right now there aren't tons of Indian foreigners coming back from America and saying all 300 million Americans are ignorant. If, if Indians said that, then yeah, that's obviously a massive generalization. Um, it's pretty fucking insane to say 90% of one of the biggest countries on earth, they all have really bad manners. What people always do in these comments, they take one bad experience and like to paint a whole group of people or a whole country with it. So this is another one I saw throughout the video. Lots of people saying, I don't care about Indian, let's say Hindus getting racism done against them because Indians support Israel. And I talked about in the video that yes, a lot of BJP supporters and the Indian government support Israel. Now, look, the Indian government's official position is pretty standard to what it was. They do believe in a Palestinian state, but as we're seeing with a lot of Indian nationalists and Hindu nationalists, they support Israel because Israel brutalizes Muslims and yeah, they hate Muslims too. And the Indian government do stuff like this in Kashmir, which obviously Hindu nationalists claim the whole of that for the Indian state. So yeah, they like Israel based on the brutalization of Muslim groups. India historically has been pro-Palestine uh, and also, which I probably should have hammered home a bit more in um, the actual video. India has one of the largest Muslim populations in the whole world. It has 200 million Muslims living in India. So if you're going to say Indians, that includes 200 million Muslims. Most Muslims support Palestine, right? Across the world. So this person saying, I used to defend Indians, but now I don't after how much hatred they spread against Muslims. Again, it's just a generalization based on the Hindu nationalist government which of course has persecuted Muslims. But as we know of most capitalist democracies, the government does not reflect the will of every single person, including 200 million Muslims who live in India itself. So I tell people to go read the comments for themselves because like I said, I didn't reply to most of them. I've just been read reading them for days. I have thousands. But yeah, the general sentiment I'm seeing in the criticism is I didn't cover the economic stuff enough. Uh, Indians are racist, so they actually deserve it. Indians are conservative, so they actually deserve it. Indians are a danger to women, so they can't come into Canada where they shouldn't be allowed. They're intolerant. They're taking over the culture. They're ruining Canadian culture. And none of it disproves anything I'm saying. Yeah, racism against Indians has been so normalized. But even in a video where I'm talking about why it's bad, obviously, people are trying to justify their racism against Indians based on things like immigration to Canada. And that seems to be the main thing that they're using to justify it. Oh my God, the Indians are ruining Canadian culture. But no one really engages with the rest of it where I start the video showing a TikTok of a woman just saying, I will never date an Indian man again because I had one bad experience with an Indian guy I dated. And then there's loads of people in the comments of that saying, why would you do that in the first place? I showed you that some ordinary gamers guy talking about not liking Gordon Ramsay's food only to get like insanely racially abused on t Twitter for no reason but the fact he was 
an Indian guy who was born in Canada giving an opinion on like Western cuisine or something like that. So I hope I addressed some of the criticism, feedback. Thanks for watching that video. It was an interesting one to make. And go check it out if you haven't. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.